Look at that. Look at Somebody got to run it, run his head, didn't it? Can y'all hear him? He's talking. <laughs> oink, oink. <laughs> look up here. Yeah, look at that. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Leo. <laughs> Anyhow, Danny and I. Hey, Danny. Hey, buddy. Y'all remember Danny, right? Hey, He's been camping with me a couple times, and uh, we did some metal detecting up Devil Lance's house. But uh, we are out today. We are on an adventure for sure. Uh, <laughs> we're going to do us a little bit of camping. And we've got some really cool stuff. Uh, some really cool toys. I'm going to try something new. A little hillbilly invention of my own. A little camping, camping toy, we'll just say. But uh, we brought a whole bunch of cool stuff. Today's the 4th of July. So we brought a bunch of fireworks too. <laughs> <laughs> but we got all kinds of toys this should be a really awesome trip i came down a little earlier today uh kind of get a head start since we had logistics uh danny's truck where it's kind of a bad spot and you can't really bring a truck down so i brought my stuff down and unloaded it stashed it in the weeds and cleared off a little bit of a spot started and ran up to meet danny and came back down and we are just now getting ready to head down the hill and head out down by the river to our little camp spot we are on a desolate road in the middle of nowhere a uh, <laughs> little turn off right there and you just kind of come back down this way and we're going to head back down through here and i'm gonna let danny if you don't mind video us sure. and we'll go out through that way i just want to show y'all this trail we're going to call it a trail i mean you know it's um yeah, we'll, we'll call it a trail. <laughs> Straight down. Hang on to your uterus. <laughs> Home sweet home for the next couple days. Look at that. Been deer here since you was here yeah. today. I just left uh, 1.30. I left to go up and meet you at 1.30. At what time is it now? Hang on. 3, 3.15. All of these tracks happened since then. You know what that means. All through there. There will be no rest tonight. They'll be all through here. Yeah, there was two big bucks right there. About six points, something like that, eight point. Right there just a little while ago still in the velvet real pretty real pretty you see any you see any camping gear back through that way nope there's a whole pretty. utv full of stuff back here <laughs> Doing good, Leo. yeah look here <laughs> Now I left this one. This is the camouflage. Yeah, we, we'll take him out now. <laughs> but you can see where I had all my stuff. I just brought all my junk down here and just kind of, there's the weed eater too. <laughs> but uh, I, I figure we'll put the big one right here and we've got there, there, all up and down through here on both sides, wherever, okay. you know, just kind of eyeball and wherever you want to set up, we'll set up. Okay. But I figure we'll put the big one right here and in that way, you know, we can open the doors and, you know, yeah. come nighttime we'll have you know real comfy place to sit and a campfire and yeah, man. the river you know background view and all that good stuff but yeah, uh man. so i guess we've got our little bit of work cut out for us for a couple hours you ready yeah, get right. sweaty let's go let's go at it buddy <laughs> all right guys we'll see y'all in a few we're gonna 
and start building a campsite. Talk to y'all. Just happened to spot something, Danny did, right in the middle of our camp spot. Some of you fishermen know what these are, know what they can do too. This one's a young one, it's a Helgamite. Can you see the fangs on the front of that thing? Yes, sir, they can they can tear your butt up if you get a, if one of them gets a hold of you just right. They got these nasty little pinchers. They actually get he's only he's only about so long. They actually get I mean they get massive. They get really big and they have these wings and they can fly. <laughs> they can chase you. They uh we had one of them get a hold of our border collie several years ago. You remember that Heather? Chloe Bear, one of them got a hold of her foot. Uh, we thought it was a snake or something that got her. Look at the fangs on that thing. Very sharp, very pointy. Bass love them though. There, you can buy these to, to bass fish with. And that's what we were talking about. We may just save him and take him, take him fishing, huh, Danny? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> take him on a fishing trip. All right. We are getting set up. I wanted to show y'all something, a little experimental thing I've been planning out for a little while. This right here, y'all know how if you buy a tent, you can get three different kinds. You can get a, a an A-frame teepee tent, which you can only stand up in the center. You can get a dome tent, which you can't stand up anywhere. Or you can get a cabin tent, which takes two or three people to put together. You got dozens of little poles to put together, all this kind of stuff. But they also, they have uh, a mesh top. A cabin tent will have a mesh top and a big rain fly that goes over top. What I've got here is, check this out. This is something I'm just kind of testing. I want to try this for some winter camping as well. This is a 10 by 10 gazebo with wall panels. Plain wall, window panel, window panel. And the front one has a door on it. And I'm going to try to use this for winter. I wanted to bring this out and do some testing with it. And just see how well, how well this thing does. It looks insanely cool, does it not? But I've still got some more modifying to do. For winter time, I'm going to, I got to put grommets in the bottom of this. And then it just pins right to the floor, just like that one is. So the whole thing will be pinned all the way around. And these here... I'm gonna put Velcro down this and along the back side of the pole so I can attach the walls directly to the poles like so with Velcro. And I figure in winter time, what you do, this is expandable. And uh, you partially expand it, you lay the top up there, then you you know push it on up. I was thinking you just take a 24 by 24 piece of thin plastic and lay it on top of there, then put the top directly over it and you would have a skin underneath this thing. You'd be able to heat it. And I could use my diesel heater and uh, say a four inch piece of aluminum dryer hose going out under the tent, have the exhaust for my diesel heater. And I have a, a fully heated 10 by 10 room to camp in with a 10 foot ceiling. I can stand up anywhere. I can do jumping jacks in here. I, I can have friends over for dinner in here. <laughs> <laughs> But check that out. What do y'all think, guys? What do y'all think? I know a lot of y'all do a lot of camping, too. Am I just a crazy hillbilly or what? What do you think, Danny? I think it's... Uh, <laughs> we'll find out. We'll tell you tomorrow, <laughs> won't we? Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow we'll tell you if I'm crazy hillbilly or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got one more little gadget that I brought I wanted to tell y'all. <laughs> we just ordered this. Which I've had this one for a while. But... Let me get the power on. With a little bit of luck, you know what I'm thinking, right? Cross your fingers. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah, one ten. It's a, little, has, it's a little inverter, a little battery in it. I've got a big one, a homemade one at the house. I made my own solar generator. But I knew we was going to be in the shade and, you know, we should have enough power of that. And I've got the other 
Bad a little. I brought a solar panel with me. Did you? The battery for my radio. Well, we can recharge <laughs> that with your solar panel if you want to. But it's a 20 inch mattress. It's a 20 inch air bed. We, we just got it for this trip. It's supposedly, supposedly the best one in Tex sells. So we'll see. The last one I had was one of those really, really cheap 10 inch, you know, you breaks can, your back. You can get a nosebleed sleeping on that. You might, <laughs> you might. It's like a full size bed. <laughs> all right it seems to be working i just thought i'd show you guys where we're at so far we've still yet got to get the rest of camp set up get our firewood gathered and look at that look at that west virginia wilderness people we are miles out there you can go mate one is several miles this way williamson several miles that way so we are out here. This is this is a really good spot. I fished here before. This is one of my favorite little camping and hiding spots to go fishing. So, all right, I'm gonna turn this off. I just wanted to show y'all what I was up to here. <laughs> cool. Huh? Take a look at that view. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> First cast, we're ready. Keep it out of Leo's ears and yeah. eyes. Oh God! Nice Who's shot. There, nice shot. How many you caught so far? I don't know. <laughs> you should reel it in. I believe there's one on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna shut the camera down. I just wanted to show y'all this. Look how pretty. We've got our campground all set up. We had some bushwhacking earlier to come through the weeds with. We came down with machetes and cut our way through the brush and Doug got us a path cut out and we're getting set up. There's a nice spot too on up. We found some more. Uh, but this one, this is the one where I caught those three big ones the last time I was over here. So, you know, that's kind of hard to ignore, am I right? It is. <laughs> We got enough bait. We got chicken liver, we got shrimp, we got worms, we got steak, we got shredded wheat. Uh-huh. We got, uh, oh, what, the, the salmon, salmon eggs, which yeah, that's more for trout, eggs, but, yeah. you know. We got flies, too, fly pole. They count. They ought to be something they, <laughs> they bite. Too. Yeah, yeah. the river parts unknown all right we've been catfishing for a little while we've got a couple hits nothing dramatic we're going to make up something Danny's making up some shredded wheat garlic dough balls just in case y'all don't know how to do this this is a really handy trick and this is a really good cart bait you can also use like a great bubble yum Works really good, and it'll stay on your hook for a long time, too. But what you do is you just take shredded wheat, and you mix in, you wet it, smush it, and then mix in powdered garlic to, to dry it out and make it really smelly. And when you squish all the water out, you make little balls and you let them sit to, uh, eh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, sit somewhere, let them dry. And then you put those on your hook and it is a really good cart bait. I just thought I'd show y'all that in case y'all didn't know that. It's what a shredded wheat dough ball looks like. Very garlicky, very garlicky. I can smell it from here. <laughs> your hands are going to smell like garlic for days. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully they'll smell like cart too, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. 
We just figured we'd give that a shot. The liver's not doing a whole lot. There's a big turtle. Uh, he's been swimming around here. I'm pretty sure he's he bit Danny a minute ago. But he's been popping up for, what, an hour? Yeah. So, nice. Something like that. And he just grabbed something. There was something floating down, a bug or something. Uh, he just swam up, and he was just happy as can be about that. He grabbed his bug and took off. But he keeps fooling around. He'll 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 run into that liver sooner or later. He's right in here somewhere. He ain't went nowhere. But it's getting there. It'll be it'll be dark here in a couple hours. Starting to get dark. But we've got got our lanterns and lights and all kinds of stuff. We brought all kinds of toys. It's now getting comfortable about the yeah. temperature wise. It's been hot today. Yeah, yeah, it got close to 90 earlier. Oh, happy 4th, everybody. Happy 4th of July. In case I didn't mention that earlier. But uh, anyhow, all right, we'll get the camera back out here. Hopefully one of us will hook into something here in a minute. And we'll break out the camera and show him to you. Now, I'm figuring we'll catch something. We'll be here tonight, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, and head out the next day. So we should have plenty of time to do some fishing, shit. How cool does this look? Hang on, hang on. A little campsite. Yeah, we got a bunch of junk. We brought way too much junk, but that's okay. We brought weed eaters, had to clear a spot out and all that good stuff. But uh, we didn't, we got a few bites. So we figured we'd come up before it got dark, gather some firewood, fix some dinner, eat a little bit, and head back down here in a little while and uh keep fishing we got a couple hits on the dough balls nothing dramatic but the good thing about dough balls is when you get a hit you know it's a big fish it's a big carp you know that that's a given but anyhow we're back at camp and danny he's gone he's gathering some firewood we got some there but we'll start here now i started dinner so what's for dinner last time we had hot dogs T-bones. <laughs> We're doing it right this time. Got the big T-bones in there cooking. And Danny, like I said, he's off over through there somewhere hunting for, hunting for some firewood. There he comes. But uh, let's check out our little spot. How pretty is that? By the river. It's a beautiful little place. I love this little spot. This is really awesome. I like this. Got a little bit of a widow maker right there. I kind of eyeballed it before I set up. It's got one limb. That side's hooked up there. This side's hooked over here. So he just looks like a widow maker. Yeah. In about 10 years, he will be. But not today. <laughs> In theory, anyway, right? That's right. <laughs> Hopefully he don't prove me to be a liar. <laughs> About 3 a.m. I'm guessing you guys can smell that, can't you? Right through the camera. It <laughs> yeah, no, it's not catfish. <laughs> Look at that. It's almost dinner time. We got one each, and we got a, we got a fight to the death over the last one. Oh, no. <laughs> We're almost there. Little bit more. There we go. Uh huh. It'll soon be dinner time. The lightning bugs are coming out. I don't know if y'all can see those or not, but they're just all over the place. The lightning bugs going off. Really nice out here. And they all go off at once. It's like one will go and then they'll all, they all go. Cool, huh? There's something as silly as lightning bugs. When Bridget was mentioning that uh, when she came in, we went to Tennessee, 
and Elvis and all that stuff. Uh, the lightning bugs. She was, you know, just hadn't seen them in a long time. <laughs> They're all over the place here, that's for sure. All right, let's get back to cooking. Danny's working his butt off over here. Yeah, I believe I got the easy part cooking. The further you go that way, the darker it gets. I just don't go out there at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's about to get dark, dark here in a little while. Uh, we'll see. It's supposed to be, a, I think Danny said the full moon tonight, so we'll, we'll take it. In theory, we'll see what the fishing's like a little later, too. Get out there in the moonlight. Dinner's ready, folks. Who's ready for a T-bone? Look at that. Uh-huh. The medium, well, and, uh, what do you figure? Medium, uh, medium well. Medium well. A medium, a well, and a medium well. <laughs> Which one you want? Dig in. Take your, take your pick. Take my pick. So you eat any of them, right? I don't care. I'm good with all of them. We had to use our pocket knives. We I forgot to bring knives. So it's a good thing we both got pocket knives. All right, let me see if I can let me get my light situated. There we go. Get your plate. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to turn the camera off here. I would show y'all, but you know how it is. It's I need like three more hands. So we'll <laughs> see y'all in a little while. Mm -hmm. Okay. 4th of July, we're in the middle of nowhere, pitch black, in case you can't see that it's pitch black. <laughs> it is black now, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> That's with no light. Oh, oh, sorry, had the wrong one on. That's with no light. But we got something. You ready? <laughs> I'll have to watch him <laughs> just in case I mean it's all wet but still the ground is wet from the rain let me get the fuse untied Happy 4th of July. <laughs> That'll work. We'll let the car go. I hear a car passing. I'm going to leave back a little bit just in case. <laughs> I'll see what these do. <laughs> we'll start out like we're yeah, I know, I know. Squeak. <laughs> <laughs> you have to untie these things. The fuses are tied. Okay, okay. Got two ready to go. It's pretty cold right there. <laughs> just like kids Boy, just like <laughs> They say growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Ow, oh, please. It's pathetic, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he takes off and he's like, ow! <laughs> Let's see if we get two of them to light. <laughs> I think only one lit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Kind of fuse we got left here. Oh, it's still full. <laughs> We've got this whole bottom. Let me, let me switch to the spotlight. This whole place is smoky. <laughs> it's not just us, there's somebody right down there doing it too. <laughs> Happy Fourth, everybody. Last one, looks like. Last one of that bunch. We've got more, but you know. They just sound so pathetic, don't they? <laughs> All right, and now we got fire starter material. All right, ain't nothing when your ground is wet, but you know, still get. We look around. Okay, we're good. I hear a bunch up there. Somebody's letting off a whole bunch. Look at the smoke through here. <laughs> yeah. So we're heading back down now, head back down to our campsite. We just had dinner. Did our little 4th of July. We did. And we're gonna go back down now and go, go see if we can't catch some fish. You hear all the tree frogs screaming, can't you? Yeah, I bet they're wondering what in the world is going on there. Yeah, I bet, right I bet. You can hear fireworks echoing up and down the river. Yeah, I know. What kind of nut job would camp out here? <laughs> yeah, we still got more. If we want to get froggy, we still got more. <laughs> we ain't even opened the M80s yet. <laughs> All right. Fire starting material. T-bones were really good, by the way. In case anybody's curious, we have one left over. Who wants it? Just send us your name and your email address, and we'll email it to you. <laughs> good. Oh, Lord, we got something. Oh, it's not a turtle. It's a fish. Good Lord. Where is he? Come on. Oh yeah. Oh, was a good one. I see. Oh yeah. It's not bad. He thinks okay. he's tough. Watch him go. Oh god, yeah. You ferocious little dude. Watch him go. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? Leo's got the first one of the night. Yeah, first blood. Come here. Take on these bugs or something else. Watch him, man. He is determined to not go along with any of this. <laughs> He's bigger than I thought. Yeah, not he's, bad. He's 15 to 18, 18 inches long, maybe 20. Not bad. Not bad. He's a eating one, that's for sure. You do me a little favor? Yes, my buddy. There's a pair of needle nose in that little box right there. Right there. Thank you. Now. 
something nice. Channel cat, looks like a channel cat, don't mm. it? Well, for don't want stone sticky. Yeah. That's a nice one. And here was just an hour or two ago, it wasn't biting at all. I know, was it? I know, yeah. I know. Just in case anybody's curious, that's the right way to hold one. You hold the dorsal fin down, and these side fins, you come in directly behind them. Those things are sharp as needles. And if you get one of them, your hand will swell up like you would not believe that oil. That's that, a trip to an ER, actually. That slime on that skin, you will get an infection in a heartbeat. All right. It'll be free. Thank you. Come again. <laughs> All right. Try it again. That's right. Next. Uh, it's about 15 till 12. We're getting ready to head back up to the campground. We only caught the one tonight. Got a few bites, but that's about it. Nothing dramatic. We saw the one turtle and we saw some bass and stuff swimming by but i wanted to show y'all something look here see them little centipede millipede look there what a pile of them let me get my light where it's not blocking the camera what a pile of them. the whole pile is just wiggling Uh, look here. I guess y'all can see that, right? <laughs> Thought I'd show y'all that real quick. Something some of you probably don't see every day. Oh crap. That was a huge turtle right there. I was gonna try to sneak up and show it. Oh well. Where do you go? He dived. He saw me move. He saw me move and dived. Anyway, morning everybody. Uh, it's about seven. Got some coffee on. Had a really good night. How'd you sleep, Danny? Slept good. I heard that. I heard that. No critters. Yeah, no critters. No, no polar bears in the tent. <laughs> so. <laughs> <coughs> that, I believe that might be that same one. Remember I mentioned that? That there was a, a great big one right here. And every time I'd go for the camera, he'd dive. I never did get a video of it. But uh, we're going to head down here in a minute. Try our luck again. See how we can do in the early morning hours before it gets hot. And it's supposed to be like 90 today. Yeah. We may have to fall in a couple times. <laughs> All right, we're back at, excuse me, frog in my throat. <laughs> we're back at our little campsite and we're gonna go play a little bit, but I wanted to show y'all something real quick. Uh, I know a lot of you, a lot of our friends, you know, stuff out there, you know, a little bit of a, little bit of a survivalist thing going on. You know what I mean? Uh, preppers that sort of thing and I know a lot of people that actually do this stuff my brother-in-law Steve hey Steve uh, <laughs> he's got all kinds of stuff you know for you know backup emergency food supplies that sort of thing great idea wanted to show y'all something for uh, would you say what procurement of lunch right yeah that sound about right yeah. <laughs> now this right here I showed y'all my 303 last time. I'm gonna show you the grocery getter this time. <laughs> <laughs> now this, hang on, there's a train going by. They're working on a train track. There's a little train track that goes down through there. Okay. This is a Gamo. Uh, it's a pellet pistol or pellet rifle, but it's not the old school pump style. Uh, this thing has, mine. This thing has a 35 pound piston. You pull it down to cock it. Put your pellet in. 
And simple as that, she's ready to go. You can pick off squirrels and rabbits and birds and stuff like that from big distances easily with this thing. It's extremely accurate. And I put a put a riser on it and put me a Bushnell scope on there. Uh, it's extremely accurate. And you know, you get right down to it in a, you know, one of those situations where something like that would be required. Um, to be honest, you know, everybody, all these survivalists, you know, they've all got AKs and all kinds of crazy weapons and stuff, but you're going to blow a squirrel to bits with a 7.62 NATO round. <laughs> with something like this, you can, you know, birds, squirrels, rabbits, um, just all sorts of stuff, you know, and, and, you know, food procurement. This is my survivalist gun. But, uh, yeah, yeah, this is my hunting gun. I usually, when I do the hunter die camping, that's camping and you're not allowed to bring any food is what that is. We're going to go out there and see how good Leo is with this, this yeah, rifle here just yeah, in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> we got us a little plate. We're going to go out and pop off a couple rounds and play with it a little bit. Show y'all some stuff. This thing is really cool. You get all kinds of different rounds for it. Titanium. Some of them have their hollow points. Some of them have BBs in the head of them. Uh, the little ones with the red tips, they're called armor piercing, but I mean, really, let's, you know, come on, it's a pellet gun. You're not going to pierce any armor with a pop can. <laughs> Target's ready to go. You got one spot. Leo, you need to drill that hole right there. All right, and try not to hit the case now. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you want to fire first? or no, you, you go ahead. All right. Go ahead there. Uh, let's see. How many yards do you figure? Well, we can't really get too far because that tree's right in the way. Yeah, I'm, you need to be where I'm at. Looks like it may be about 25 yards, don't it? That's a little titanium one there. They really light. Feel how light that is. Well, it is light. Yeah. And Most you feel like aluminum. Yeah. And you can hear it. Um, you know, like a pellet gun, they'll make a thump. But like I said, 22, when it goes supersonic, you can hear that high pitch. You know. Right. And you can hear that with these. But you just... It's a single shot. Just load your pellet. Close your barrel and you're ready to fire. That looked good. <laughs> well, let's go see. You got the dog mad. Oh yeah, you about an inch high is all. Yeah. Yeah, we're close. And yeah. you can see. Oh, yeah, it's here. A little low that time. Yeah, I see. It's about an inch or so low. You want to try it? Sure. Here, you sleep, Ryan. I'll record you. Take your pick, whichever pellet you like. I'll use the BB one this time. But for small game hunting, the thing is awesome. It, like I said, it's extremely accurate. And you can get... I heard him hit. You can get, you know, like for, for small game, say for a survival situation, you buy a box of 22 shells. They're, you know, a box of 50 is about 25 bucks now. For $25, you can get a lifetime supply of pellets. You know, you don't ever have to worry about this stuff again. And you've got, just in case, you've got all the free food in the world. You know, if you get right down to it, all the big game, the deer, the boar, all that kind of stuff. In a situation like that, it's going to be gone in about a week or two. That's going to leave. Quiet yeah, too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that little silencer up front keeps him quiet. 
<laughs> but something like that, you know, you could live on, you know, you could hunt and uh, squirrels, rabbits, all kinds of stuff, birds, right, right there behind you. All kinds of stuff with that little thing. Uh oh, armor piercing. Yeah, yeah, show them that red one. It's got a little red tip on it. They're supposedly armor piercing. Uh huh. <laughs> Maybe an armadillo. <laughs> hard hitting yeah it does it hits hard for a pellet gun mm -hmm. it's got a 35 pound piston it puts 35 pounds of force behind a little tiny pellet all at once if you had to go buy one of these what what 200 a couple more bucks yeah i think i gave 180 something of course the scope was a little bit more you know and i had to had to order a riser right that's nice leo yeah yeah, for, for what you pay for that, man, that's that's an awesome so little gun. So I guess gun. we're going in the fall, we're going to do some... Hunter die camping. camping. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do some primitive camping this fall, Danny and I, and uh, we're going to do some hunter die camping where you're not allowed to bring food. <laughs> I guess I'll be losing some weight. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyhow, we're going to go back here. We've got some more toys we're going to play with today. And... <laughs> Have some fun. <laughs> uh, we bought something special too. We want to show you guys. Danny's got something that he bought from when he worked in the mines. Yeah, that, we we go over that today. Anytime you want to. And you guys, you guys will love this. This is I've heard of it before, but I've never seen it before. And uh, Danny is actually he just happened to mention that he had one of these. And uh, are you for real? <laughs> but so we'll show you that in a little while. But, uh, okay, we've been playing with a pellet rifle, pinging leaves and stuff as they float by. And we're gonna try to, we're gonna play with a different toy now for a while. You reckon I can get that up on that limb there? Probably need to go over here. Yeah, right around this side. Danny brought a little toy <laughs> that we're gonna hook up. Gotcha. Let's see if we make this work. Like that. In case any of you are wondering, it's a shortwave radio antenna. <laughs> And a really big fishing rod. <laughs> uh -huh. How hard is that to hook to get back out? <laughs> that, that, I'm taking that as a bad sign. <laughs> the way you laughed. <laughs> it's stuck. There it goes. There you go. No all right out through here yeah looking like it ain't it i think that's it all right yeah yeah now what we'll put this pole on the ground we'll lay us down right here for now okay and i'm going it up there i put, put my uh, antenna to it my wire uh-huh I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Right here. This is a, a, a personal uh, rescue device uh, that you can get, especially for campers and hikers. Uh, it's called uh, Rest Link 400. And uh, what it does is, if you're in the woods where you don't have cell signal, you flip this antenna out, flip this up if you get. Uh, hurt or your friend gets hurt or you get sick and you hit this red button and hold it it'll hit a satellite and it will uh gps your location to a local ems or fire service yeah so they can find you so that's a real good thing to have it uh costs a couple hundred dollars for it but it's a it's a nice unit 
and uh, so far I haven't had to use it. Hopefully yeah, we don't have to. Yeah. Later. Hopefully we won't need that. Need it today or tomorrow. But that's that's a cool thing. I thought. Yeah, I'd... it is. It is. It most certainly is. But uh, that goes over that, so you don't accidentally hit the button. We don't want. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody coming to us, do we? Yeah. <laughs> Nine one one show, show up. But uh, I'm going to show you the little radio here. This is a HF radio, ten through uh, one sixty. It's HF. Uh, it's ham. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, made to do portable stuff in the woods with. So that's right. what we're going to do today. We're going to try to maybe make a contact later. Try to set the antenna up now, but later on this evening do a contact maybe out of country or in some other states somewhere. Yeah. So we'll see if we can do that. Sounds this fun. This evening. So that sounds cool. We'll get back with y'all later on that. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get this in the ground what I do. Gotta find my food. Aha. Uh -huh. And then use this as a post for the other end of the antenna. I get where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Need to get back there far enough though. It should be, yeah. Before, there we go. There Zip tie. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. The antenna, this is a 40 meter antenna. It's called a long in fed dipole. Let me get this right here off the limb. I'm going to the limb off of it. This is a matching transformer. I built that, in fact, uh, to match this wire radio to this antenna. Uh huh. It's called a matching transformer. Here's the wing nut. If I don't drop it and break it first, yeah. you just put this onto this uh, wing nut right here. Turn it around like that. You got 80 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters, which is CW, which is key, uh -huh. Morse code. And you got 20 meters, which you're okay. talking to other countries in. Okay, I get you. I get you. Yeah. I'll show you on the radio later, later how, how they are. I wonder if this is, yeah, this here probably be long enough. I've got one that's 50 feet, but I don't think I need a 50 foot one. I hear Keith coming. shallows are right there that's what he's doing he's slowing down for that curve where the shallows are it's midday we, we ran out for a little while ran up and called the wives made sure they knew we were alive that we are primitive camping we have no cell service but <laughs> we do have ham radio <laughs> not joking check out the antenna Antenna goes all the way out to those trees back there. <laughs> Check it out. It's short wave. The, uh, it's a ham radio. Uh, one of them was in Virginia. One's in Tennessee. One was New York a second ago, right? So we're just kind of listening right now. Is it? Okay. The solar flare. Heard that. Cool, huh? How cool is that? A little solar panel right there. A little battery right here. Power and everything. Cable going up to the antenna. The electronics right there. And then the antenna wire runs all the way down to those two trees right there, the one on the left. We've got a little red thing hooked up in the tree to make a big antenna. How cool is that? 60 feet long, the antenna's 60 feet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not, right? We just figured we'd have something to play with while it's hot out today. 
You get out in the sun, it's it's like 90. It's, warm. It, it's toasty out in the sun, but we're not moving much. No, nah, we're hanging out and our little area, it's all under big canopy, you know, just all over the place, all out through here. This whole area is. So, you know, we're just, as long as we're under the canopy, it's 15 degrees cooler. You get out in the sun. Yes, it's too hot to cook out. <laughs> but uh, we got our throw lines out. We're going to bait them up here in a little while, throw them in. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of late night fishing tonight. We're just going to kind of hang out till about the edge dark and mosey down that way and see what we can do. But, uh, yeah, we've seen all kinds of that big turtle. He's been back a dozen times. You see him every little while. He'll pop back up. A big red-looking one. Kind of orange-looking turtle. But, anyway, enough about red-headed stepchildren turtles. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay now this y'all know how we try to show y'all something different in our videos usually <laughs> and danny and i we seem to be handling that different thing pretty good go yeah, camping with shortwave stuff. radios and junk <laughs> different kinds of guns <laughs> We wanted to show you something. Now, I, I know I've mentioned to you guys before in some of our other videos about kettle bottoms. Now, this is something that uh, that coal miners had to deal with. And it's basically, it's the fossilized remnant of a tree. And if you look, you can see the, the wood grain, you know, in this. You can tell that this is a fossilized section of tree. Now, why do we have this here? This one's been coated in urethane. Danny preserved it. And you'll find out why here just in a second. <laughs> Danny is the only person I've heard, we've heard, of hundreds, if not thousands, of coal miners who have been killed when these kettle bottoms. So you, when you're mining coal and you go underneath these fossilized tree roots, they can come loose. They drop out. And, you know... Like I mentioned in the other video specifically about coal mining and kettle bottoms and stuff. If you were the lucky guy, okay, if you were the lucky one, you got hit by these big kettle bottoms and you got smashed instantly. If you were the lucky guy, if you were the unlucky guy, you got stuck, you got trapped behind these things. And well, I, I, I can imagine you guys know what's going to happen in just a, a short matter of time. Danny, right here, is the only human that I personally know of who has been hit in the head while mining by a kettle bottom and survived it. He's the only person that I know of that I've ever heard of to be hit in the head while mining with a kettle bottom and walk away. Now, he wants to show you something here. Check this out. Yeah, I was wanting to, I was wanting to tell you about the day that this happened, a little bit about, just a little bit about it. Yeah. I was uh, doing track violations on a, on a main line, uh, mining, in a mine in uh, Wyoming County, West Virginia. And uh, I've been there for 14 years or so. And uh, one morning I was, uh, one afternoon I was doing violations to clear up violations that the uh, inspector had found. And I was walking down this entry, and all at once, from nowhere, out of the top came this piece, and another piece was on this, and it broke when it hit my head. This light right here, which it busted, it, it landed on the on the light. It knocked the hat off my head, and this came apart in two different sections. There's another piece on top of that, another four or five inches. Yeah. So this one here, I weighed it. It weighs 26 pounds this piece does yeah it felt pretty heavy and uh so when that happens when you find a killer bottom you have to correct it because it could fall out on someone so we had to set a timber under it to support it until we get a roof boulder under it. So the timbers so we were talking about that can you you know what i might get what i'm thinking right the, the bind props and stuff yeah about sizes and yeah stuff yeah and, yeah yeah so yeah and they use uh them for uh for support for temporary support uh, for uh, different mines for different heights because the height of coal that I worked in was around 
six feet that's the height that I worked in so they would order them type of size timbers for say 72 inches to, to seven foot right you know for them of, of what kind of wood well uh, <laughs> mostly they would use poplar because poplar was a type of wood that would let you know when the roof was going to come down on your head uh, they would pop and crack uh, harder wood would not much let you know that. Settles like metal or something. Right, and then it'd be on you. Now, poplar would bust and crack and make all kind of noise. Before right. It comes down. Sort of a warning. Right. Give you a little little bit of a heads up. Right. So, uh, I feel that I, God spared me that day uh, no doubt. From, from death because if that had been another inch back, it would, like Leo said, it would have broke my neck uh, and killed me right there like how many other yeah. coal miners had done. Yeah. That's true. That's true. We, I mentioned that in one of the videos. There's a there's a big kettle bottom, sticking out of a mountainside, and I mentioned that in one of the videos about how many people have been killed by these things over the years, and I had no idea until you mentioned this yesterday that you had brought this thing, you know. Yeah, I I brought it from out of the mines. We we worked uh, right at a thousand feet underground down an elevator. We went mm -hmm. down an elevator shaft a thousand feet. A thousand feet down, guys. Just to get down. And just think how far down this was. Was, was a tree, was a forest at one time, thousands yeah. of years yeah. ago. Yeah. It's just hard to me for the yeah. fathom that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Pangea. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is the exact hat I was wearing that day that saved my life. Uh, the light was on it, like, like I say, like this. And it had hit right here and knocked. Knocked that plumb to the ground, and this landed on the light and, and busted it badly. And the hat was knocked off of my head. But I was not hurt, didn't go to the hospital, didn't have to go. Just was blessed to Very come lucky. out of it with something like yeah. that. This has killed many good men right here. Yes, it has. Yes, yes. There have been a lot of people, guys, killed over the years by these things. And that's much heavier than a rock. Yes, it is. It? Yes, it is. It is. It's considerably heavier. It weighs, it feels like it weighs about as much as a cinder block. Yeah, it's 20, I weighed it today, oh, yesterday, it was yesterday, my wife said, well, you know my bathroom scales out here outside? I said, well, I was weighing this, uh, this kettle bottom, and it does, it weighs 26 pounds, and the other one weighs a little bit, about 31 pounds, so it's a little bit bigger. Yeah. That was sliced off of this when it hit the ground it just come apart so the whole thing hit me right yeah and then when it hit the ground it come apart yeah about 60 pounds worth of rock all together yeah, uh, fell from i think it was around nine feet nine to eleven feet it fell from uh-huh you yeah. are lucky danny yeah I'm you are lucky brother so so we thought we'd let you see that to yeah was... kind of brings it home don't it you know you hear that you know a lot of people have been killed by these kettle bottoms but until you actually see one and hear you know hear danny's story yeah see my dad had told me he said son he says when you go in that old mine he said i don't want you to go he said but you watch out for them rib rolls and them kettle bottoms he said that took many, many as many good men as you'd ever see yeah, it looks like leo's got another one here I think this one's a fish. He fights like a fish. I don't know if I cross myself. He don't feel like he's that big. You want three, maybe? What in the world? Did you see that? Yeah, that's fish. They were flying by. <laughs> it's like a channel cat. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Good luck, Pole. What do you call that now? You didn't name that, ain't you? Yeah, Buffy. <laughs> Buffy the crawfish slayer, but Buffy the catfish slayer. And turtles. Yeah. Really good pole. Yes, if anybody's it interested, it's for sale. $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> It will sure catch channel cat. <laughs> yeah, that's about 15, 16 inches long. Ouch. He 
careful. You yeah. know how them barbs are. Look at that, professional. Yeah, I heard it snapping, Doug. Ah, uh, not okay. too bad, is it? Oh, yeah. Pretty. Yeah, it's pretty talented. Yeah, yes. Not even hurt. He's no. good to go again. Yep, he's ready to eat some more liver. <laughs> okay, now over here, there's another pole right there. It's got liver on it. You head on, right on over there now and go bite that one. <laughs> or that one right there. Yeah, yeah that, that one. You see that one? This one right here. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's going to go back on the mud bank. Look at him. Yeah, he, he's trying to go over and bite that pole. <laughs> there, there, there he goes. Go you, little dude. Well, maybe he'll get another here in a minute. Yeah, I don't have a fish on right now. I just wanted to show you something. Look at this. I don't know how well you can see the bugs. There's thousands of them. Little tiny gnats. Just everywhere. So remember, we went through all this to get you the video, so you guys subscribe. <laughs> Look, uh, Leo's got another one here. Oh my God, the bugs. And the bugs is about to kill us. It's about 10, 10 after 10 p.m. It's a fighting too. Yeah, it is. You biggin'? It's something, yeah. You figured out it's a fish or a it turtle. It might be a giant turtle. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh my God, the bugs. I see something. It's a giant turtle. It's a big one. Oh, Lord. <coughs> oh, my God, the bugs. It's <laughs> <laughs> killing us. Oh my god, he's a big one. He's a big boy. He's a bruiser. Look at that. Oh, the head on that thing. He don't want to come out of there. <coughs> Leo, this is awful. <coughs> Golly. Oh, it was your, you did it, didn't Yeah, you? that's me. From there to there. Oh, he's, he's a twice as big as that other one. Yeah, he is. About 14 inches, something mm. like that. Bigger than a dinner plate. It's another soft shell. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> All right. Now turn him loose again. That's three turtles. Three and turtles and two catfish. I'm not helping. Look at the size of that thing. He's big. Watch, he's going back in the water here. He's a bruiser. Turtle Man Leo. I'm yep. going to nickname you Turtle Man Leo. Apparently. <laughs> My God, the bugs, man, they're all in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they carry you off. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, we can get off here for now. Yeah, yeah. Well. He's back at it again. He's got something. Don't know if it's a fish or another turtle. He got off, I think. Yep, he got off. Oh my goodness. He got off. I, I got the trash still. <laughs> Piece of plastic. Well, you, you hadn't been losing them lately. You hadn't been losing them, had you? Yeah. He got off. Oh well, I, I, he felt like heavy. I think it was another turtle. He felt like another truck tire. So, oh well. Bait back up, get back out. Okay, it's on midnight. He's hooked up to something big to see what it is. Here. I believe it's a big catfish. Mm, bugs in my face. Oh yeah, 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 it's a catfish. Oh God, cook that. Yeah, that's a big one right there. Oh yeah, watch him fight. Watch him, oh yeah. <laughs> Up the river, down the river. Oh, watch him. Okay. Hmm. 
You going down the river now, ain't you? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Good Lord. Watch him. He's a good That's a good day. <laughs> I think he'd get tired. I see him here. Yeah. It's a little flat flash every now and then. He's a big one. Oh, Lord, look at that. I bet that's 25 inches long. 30. <laughs> uh, you ain't done yet. <laughs> get a hold of you. Look like he's going to pull you in, bub. <laughs> Listen to Listen him talking. To him. Talking to you. That's, that's a good. <laughs> Look at that. Listen to Somebody got to run it, run his head, didn't he? Can y'all hear him? He's talking. <laughs> oink, oink. <laughs> Look up here. Yeah. Look at that. He's a good or ain't he? Yes, he is. One of them midnight, midnight fish here. Yeah, yeah. It's right at midnight. That's All right, nice. let's put him back in there. Turn him loose. Go swim, be free, dude. Looks like he's on a roll. Nice meeting you, brother. Okay, check this out. I wanted to show y'all something before he leaves, if I can. Remember I was telling you the, the little bug, the Helgamite, and so they get really big, they fly, and they turn into these flying Helgamites. But guess what? Right there is a flying Helgamite. He's about three, three and a half inches long. Look at the fangs on that bad boy. Eat you up. That Eat thing you will up. tear your butt up. Watch him. Like the stick. I'm about to stick all yeah, he, he don't want about to stick. Look at the pinchers on that thing. He is mad. Look at them pinchers. He's coming right, right at me. Yeah, he's mad at you, Danny. <laughs> he's mad at you for picking on him. Right me. I'm going to get you. I'm going to fly right in your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this thing hurts, right? Yeah, they do. They're nasty little devils. Well, it's the morning of the last day. We've got campsite more or less tore down. Cause of logistics. <laughs> We've only got so much room in the Can-Am. So, and I've got like a truckload myself. So we're going to have to, we take Danny up, take him to his truck, and then run back down, load my stuff up, and head back to the house. Danny, have you had a good trip this Oh, man, week? it's been great. Uh, I've had a good time, man. I've had a good time. I sure have. I like the tent too, man. It turned out pretty good, didn't it? Real good. And I learned <laughs> something about you. You're well, a fisherman. <laughs> you catch them fish and them turtles. That's for sure. I, I, every now and then I get lucky. Every now and then. <laughs> but uh, all right, guys. We thank y'all for coming along. We appreciate you coming along with us on our little camping trip uh, from Southern West Virginia, from Danny and I. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you the next time on the Hillbilly Files. Bye-bye.